want to know what a furry and Pac-Man have in common? No, not that kind of furry. This furry. Well, stay tuned and I'll explain in today's video. So Pac-Man Museum Plus just came out on all platforms, and with it we have 14 classic games all playable on one cartridge. While there are some questionable choices in this collection, such as having the Japanese versions of games rather than the English versions, or the Eraser of Miss Pac-Man, all in all, it's a solid collection that rivals the likes of Sonic Origins. Where is the physical copy, Sega? With the modern release of classic games comes a lot of newcomers who have never played the classics, such as the arcade version of Arrangement, Super Pac-Man, Pac-Motos, or Championship Edition, the last game made by the father of Pac-Man, Toru Iwatani himself. However, a lot of people will get to discover such classics like Pac-Land, and a game I've never played until now, pac in time Pack in Time is a weird game to say the least. Growing up I would see it but never really cared to play it as there was no modern port of the game and it just never caught my attention. But now that I had Museum Plus, I had no excuse to play it. Bruh. Okay, scratch that. I had to play it if I wanted to get the good content. Thanks Namco. Pack in Time starts us off with a story that confirms it's a sequel to Pac-Man 2 The New Adventures. Remember that point-and-click game where Pac-Man had crazy personality problems? The plot essentially breaks down to how the Ghost Witch is mad at Pac-Man for foiling her plans. When all Pac-Man did in the previous game was get some milk, pick a flower, and hang out at the arcade, only stepping up to fight when his son was literally robbed. Anyway, the old hag puts a curse on Pac-Man. You should kill yourself. The game looks nice, and the music is phenomenal for a SNES game. Like, it's almost on plot levels of good. But, unfortunately that's all the good I can say about it. Slippery controls, confusing cryptic puzzles, and cheap level design make this an absolute pain to play. It's like this wasn't even a Pac-Man game to begin with. What the heck are you looking at? This dude looks like he owns an air fryer or something. What? What's that? You say pac in time wasn't even a Pac-Man game to begin with? That's right, hypothetical audience that should totally subscribe to my channel. While pac in time originally came out for the DOS, Macintosh, SNES, and Game Boy in 1995, what's even more is that it's a reskin of a game called Fury of the Furries that came out in 1993. You see, in 1994, the game was licensed to Namco. And to put it in layman terms, this game pulled a Mario 2. Changing the graphics, music, and adding in their own popular character. To clarify, the Amiga, DOS, and Game Boy versions are just a reskin of the original game, while the SNES version is built from the ground up with original levels. However, it still uses all the main power-ups from the original game. Falling right out of the sky! We gotta drop the load! Fury of the Furries is a neat little game that more people need to play in my opinion. You see, the plot revolves around these little creatures called Tinies who have just returned from space only to realize their home has been ruined and taken over by an evil Tiny called the Wicked One. I'm gonna be all up in those feet. So, utilizing the Tiny's abilities to transform, they gain new skills, enabling them to swing, climb, fight, and swim their way to the castle, where the king is being held captive. It's good quality old school platforming. While I didn't grow up with the original game, I feel more people should play would inspire the creation of Pack and Time, as there is a lot of charm that even surpasses the level designs and ability gimmicks themselves. I think the game deserves more attention, other than the people that grew up with it. For instance, there's no speedrunning other than this one video I found on YouTube that's just World 1, but yeah, there's no real speedruns in the game, and barely anyone talks about it anymore in modern media, and I think it's just a pretty cool thing that more people need to talk about. I feel when developing this game, they could have been a little more original with the ideas and power-ups by giving him a pack dot to throw instead of the little energy ball, and giving him a snorkel when he's underwater to signify that you needed to swim. If you're interested in playing either Fury of the Furries, 
or the PC version of Pack in Time, I'll leave a link below as the game is considered abandonware and is free to play in a browser or just download on your PC. So now that you know about Fury of the Furries, I have to tell you about its sequel. That's right, after 20 years, the original devs from the first game are making a real sequel, and it's looking pretty good. The title? Fury of the Furries 2. And the mandatory subtitle. I'm not gonna lie, the sass in this name alone is already really charming. At the time of this video, the dev's official Twitter only has around 100 followers, and to me that's criminally underrated and unacceptable when they made the account just three years ago. They already posted a trailer, and while I know numbers don't mean everything, they need more attention. Uh, I already made the mistake with Ricky and Vicky when missing that game launched out, so I want to make sure that people notice that this game's coming out. Also, what is it with the French bringing back old dormant games from like over 20 years ago? I'm looking at you, Windjammers 2. Not complaining, but just pretty cool. One thing I also want to point out that a lot of YouTubers don't cover is that Fury of the Furries was getting a sequel as a 3D platformer. Now, I found this on the website over here, but there's actually a lot of cool concept art. And again, this game doesn't take itself seriously, and it's just cool to see what could have been. I really like the more serious, goofy art style they were going with, and I know that sounds like an oxymoron, but look at these images, and it honestly looks pretty promising. Uh, even though the sequel they're making now is going to be 2D, I do hope that they continue to consider a possible 3D remake. I want to give a big shout out to my follower Danny Dirt on Twitter for even telling me of the existence of Fury of the Furries, which led me down a rabbit hole to research how Pack and Time even came to be. I'd also like to thank the channel It's a Pixel Thing for making a video explaining the history and origins of Fury of the Furries. If you want more context about how these games came to be and a more in-depth overview of the gameplay, I'd highly recommend you check out his channel. The person who composed the absolute banger of an OST is actually on YouTube and has uploaded the entire soundtrack of Pack and Time on YouTube and Bandcamp. And yes, I did buy the Pack and Time album. I'm a real fan, gotta show my support. And lastly, a big thanks to Diamond Long Place for being the first and only person online to upload a full playthrough of this game so I could see the ending for myself without checking myself into a mental asylum. Links to everyone will be in the description. Thanks for watching to the end, and remember my friends, stay foxy. Hey, thanks for making it to the end of this video. Not many people make it here, so it means a lot that you made it this far anyway. I want to give a special shout out to all my wonderful patrons, but more specifically, my $10 plus Potato Breaker patrons. We got Ninja Star, Nico, Kit Kat, Jamus, Homo Funky Chunky, Boob, Panda, Soul, and Vasha. Thank you all for supporting my videos, and I'll see you all again next time.